Allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. How did you end up here? Did 657 Boulevard call to you with its force within? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're looking at true crime television shows based on very unsettling source material. For this list, we're focusing on true crime dramas and excluding docu-series. Beware of spoilers ahead. I mean, you believe it, don't you? Number 10, The Girl from Plainville. I hate that I'm always worrying and regretting about the past, and I'm I'm pessimistic about the future. You don't have to feel that way. On July 12th, 2014, Conrad Roy III was found deceased in a Massachusetts parking lot as a result of carbon monoxide poisoning inside his truck. When investigators went through his phone, they found countless texts from his girlfriend, Michelle Carter, encouraging him to take his own life. When he hesitated or second-guessed the decision, she repeatedly told him to go through with it. Whenever he had doubts, she diminished them. Whenever he had guilt about leaving his family, she assured him that she would comfort them. Carter's deeply upsetting messages showed that she played an active role in his death, and that had it not been for her unrelenting words of assurance, Roy might have lived. She was ultimately found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Elle Fanning starred as Carter in Hulu's The Girl from Plainville, which explores the unprecedented case and the heartbreaking reality of mental illness in youth. I can make you happy, make your dreams come Number nine, Candy and Love and Death. She looked so hurt. So I said, I'm sorry. In June 1980, Betty Gore was killed inside her Wiley, Texas home. The grisly crime made headlines not only because it occurred on Friday the 13th, but also because the axe wielder was church-going housewife Candace Candy Montgomery. However, not many people were familiar with the shocking murder and the controversial not guilty verdict. That changed in 2022 with the arrival of Hulu's Candy, a five-part series starring Jessica Biel in the titular role. In 2023, Max released their seven episode series, Love and Death, led by Elizabeth Olsen. Shall we set a date for the affair to begin? Let's go with December 12th. Both shows follow the affair between Candy Montgomery and Betty Gore's husband, Alan, which was the catalyst for the violent altercation. Beale and Olsen perfectly portray the eeriness of Candy committing a crime and then going about her day. I went to Betty's and we just got to talking. And I looked at my watch and thought enough time to go to Target to get Father's Day cards, so I drove all the way to Plano. But when I got to the parking lot, I realized my watch had stopped, and so I was late. I didn't even go in. I'm so upset I wanted to see the kids' puppet show. Number eight, I am the knight. Your grandfather is a very, very dangerous man. Stay away. Stay away from him. TNT's I Am The Knight tells the true story of Fauna Hodel, who uncovered dark secrets in her biological family, including a connection to one of the most famous unsolved cases in Los Angeles. In 1949, Tamar Hodel, Fauna's birth mother, alleged that she was physically mistreated by her father, Dr. George Hodel, who was ultimately acquitted in court. George Hodel had dirt on a lot of people, so he was protected by the higher-ups in the police department. Among other crimes, the wealthy physician was a suspect in the 1947 murder of aspiring actress Elizabeth Short, aka the Black Dahlia, who was found in unspeakable conditions. While the case has been explored in several books, podcasts, and movies, TNT interweaves two twisted stories surrounding the Hodel family in one dark, fast fascinating series. Your granddaughter called. I'll take care of her. Number seven, Under the Bridge. Yo, where's Josephine at? I'm supposed to fight some chick. Hey, somebody's ass about to get rocked. Based on Rebecca Godfrey's 2005 book, Under the Bridge, the true story of the murder of Rena Virk, Hulu's limited series takes a look at the cruelty that led to the untimely death of Rena Virk. In November 1997, a group of young people, mostly girls, attacked her at a gathering under the Craig Flower Bridge in Saanich, British Columbia, Canada. We had a plan, you know, to teach Rena a lesson. 
So when I did that, everyone just jumped on her. Unfortunately, things didn't end there, as two partygoers, Kelly Ellard and Warren Glowatsky, followed her as she tried to leave and attacked her again before Ellard drowned Verk. The violent crime was shocking not only because it happened in a small Canadian town, but also because the victim and perpetrators were all so young. Young girls in Victoria were the ones we were supposed to protect. not be protected from. Number six, a friend of the family. In 1970s Idaho, Jan Broberg was kidnapped twice by family friend Robert Birchtold. Strangely, he also had intimate encounters with her parents, essentially blackmailing them to get away with his crimes. What exactly is your relationship with Robert Birchtold? Well, he's, he's practically a member of the family. He loves our children like they're his own, like we love his. Anyone who has seen Netflix's documentary Abducted in Plain Sight already knows the bizarre story. Peacock's A Friend of the Family retells Broberg's traumatic experiences with Birchtold and how he used brainwashing tactics to convince her that abductions were part of an alien mission. Do you remember how we talked about at some point there would come a time where we would both be tested? Yes. That time has come. Jan Broberg herself, who later became an actress, collaborated on the series and appeared in the finale. Her involvement helped creators make the series as close as it can be to the real Stranger Than Fiction tale. Jan and her family gave us their childhood diaries, like the actual diaries. Um, they gave us clothes that they wore. They gave us furniture from their house. They gave us thousands of photographs. Number five, the act. I'm so trapped. And I can't tell anyone. You can tell me. This Hulu miniseries is as disturbing as it is tragic. For years, Claudine Dee Dee Blanchard told everyone that her daughter Gypsy Rose had a long list of illnesses, including muscular dystrophy, leukemia, and epilepsy. She was forced to use a wheelchair and underwent unnecessary surgeries. She also notably ate through a feeding tube and had her head shaved to appear more sickly. Oh, sweet pea, I know sometimes you want to be like everybody else, but you know what? <laughs> I like you special. It was suspected that Dee Dee might have had factitious disorder imposed on another, meaning she acted as though her child was ill to gain attention. After a lifetime of torturous medical procedures, isolation, and pain, Gypsy Rose planned her mother's murder with her boyfriend, Nicholas Godijon, in 2015. The best memory that I have in my entire life is the day that I got to prison. Number four, Mindhunter. In a case where we can't immediately divine motive, we shouldn't panic. It's a riddle, but it can be solved. It's complex, but it's human. Based on John Douglas and Mark Olshaker's true crime book, Mindhunter follows the inception of the FBI's behavioral science unit and of criminal profiling. Along with psychologist Dr. Wendy Carr, special agents Holden Ford and Bill Tench set out on a research project, proving that criminal psychology could be used to capture serial killers. If there's one thing I know, it's this. A mother should not scorn her own son. If a woman humiliates her little boy, he will become hostile and violent and debased, period. They travel around the country interviewing convicted murderers, including the likes of Edmund Kemper and David Berkowitz, which the Netflix series reenacts with direct quotes. Exploring everything from their traumatic backstories to their horrifying crimes, Mindhunter depicts some of the most depraved killers with eerie accuracy. Well, if you know, you know. You don't need to talk to me. It's yourself you need to talk to. Number three, appropriate adult. I just had the right bear in that garden. More. More. I don't believe it. Not that you can let on to the police, I told you. Okay? I keep them in nice and confident. ITV's two part crime drama stars Emily Watson as Janet Leach, a social worker who became the appropriate adult for one of the UK's most prolific serial killers. In 1994, she was summoned to attend the interrogation of Fred West, played by Dominic West, not his relative, where he confessed to the 1987 murder of his daughter Heather. When police searched the West's, quote, House of Horrors at 25 Cromwell Street, they uncovered her buried remains among several others. 
More were later discovered at different locations. He went back to the house and he did indicate certain places where the police might dig in the garden. But he never admitted that there were six other bodies under the house. The series focuses on Leach's pursuit of the truth about West and his wife Rosemary's horrific crimes. Dominic West, Emily Watson, and Monica Dolan, who played Rose, all won Best Acting Awards at the 2012 BAFTAs, while the program itself earned a nomination for Best Miniseries. I thought maybe you thought I'd let you down. If you let anyone down, Fred, it was yourself. Number two, Dr. Death. The first season of Dr. Death is based on Christopher Dunch, a Texas-based neurosurgeon who received a life sentence for maiming and killing patients. Anyone close to me thinks that I'm likely something between God, Einstein, and the Antichrist. Because how can I do anything I want and cross every discipline boundary like it's a playground and never, ever lose? Over two years, Dunch caused irreparable damage to at least 33 out of 38 patients, two of whom died during or after an operation. Others were left paralyzed, severely injured, and or in agonizing pain. Peacock's anthology series follows doctors Randall Kirby and Robert Henderson, who fought to have Dunch's license revoked and him put behind bars. He killed Shelley Brennan by drilling through her vertebral artery. He also did that to another patient at Dallas Medical. Shouldn't that have precluded him from employment at other hospitals? If the hospitals that employed him had reported his pattern of egregious crimes, many victims could have been saved. Season two focuses on disgraced surgeon and conman Paolo Macchiarini, whose unethical experiments killed multiple patients. Both sickening cases are the stuff of nightmares. There are certain things I didn't want to have to tell you. You're giving me no choice. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Baby Reindeer, Richard Gadd's autobiographical series about his stalker. Every day now, Martha would be outside, this ticking time bomb on my life. I would leave first thing in the morning, and she would be there. I love you, nipple. Think of me at work today. Des, the chilling capture and conviction of Scottish serial killer Dennis Nielsen. 195 Melrose Avenue, N2. There, you'll find the remains of 12 or 13 people dating back to 1978. <clears throat> Under the banner of heaven, two religious extremist brothers murdered their sister-in-law and niece. Actions have consequences, Brenda. You know that. Are you threatening me? No. I am but the hand of God. It is his mouth that commands me. Blackbird, an undercover operation to secure a confession from suspected serial killer Larry Hall. Do you know what they're for, James? No. They watch over the dead. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Dahmer, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Jeffrey Dahmer is one of the most recognizable names in the true crime world. After Ryan Murphy's controversial series hit Netflix in 2022, a new generation was introduced to the horrific story. The two PBRs, please. Oh, he's buying us PBR. <laughs> he must be a real player. <laughs> Starring Evan Peters in the title role, Dahmer follows the Milwaukee serial killer from childhood to his reign of terror between the late 70s and early 90s. For years, he lured and killed men, most of whom were from marginalized communities. Why does everybody always want to leave me? <sighs> leave you? I want you to leave you. I need some fresh air. It stinks in here. Well, hey, I said I'd turn on the air conditioner. While living at the Oxford Apartments, neighbors complained of awful smells and noises. It wasn't until Dahmer was apprehended on July 22, 1991, that police discovered his house filled with remains, the details of which we can't get into, and explicit photos of his victims. It doesn't get more disturbing than that. I called you, and I told you over and over a million times that something was going on, and you know what you did? Y'all did nothing! What true crime series disturbed you the most? Let us know in the comments below. Give these people some release. Never. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.